15, we're getting a beautiful picture coming through. Roger, go ahead with your question. Roger, we'll, we'll admire the beautiful picture for, for a few minutes here. Deke just passed out from the shock, incidentally. Okay, fellas, uh, I have a preliminary statement to make here. The questions uh, you will be asked in this news conference have been submitted by newsmen here at the Manned Spacecraft Center who have been covering the flight. Some of the questions they raised have been answered in your communications with, com with Mission Control, but the public at large has not necessarily heard them. The questions are being read to you exactly as submitted by the newsmen and in an order of priority specified by them. Question number one. This last week, we have shared scores of exciting moments with you. Which single moment would you most like to live again? And is there any moment which you would never like to repeat? Well, I guess we all probably have uh, a different idea on uh, which would be the single most exciting moment of the flight. And uh, maybe we'll just run through it one at a time. I guess. Uh, most impressive moment I can remember is standing up on uh, Hadley Mountain, Hadley Delta, and looking back at the plane and seeing the limb and the rill at Mount Hadley and uh, the whole big picture in one one swoop. And I think we've got some pictures for you from up there, and I believe the TV was running at the same time. And I think that was uh, probably the most impressive sight that I've ever seen. Yeah? Well, I guess I'd have to say uh, uh, sort of two events occurred. Uh, which were exciting uh, for different reasons, and uh, I guess they were really kind of the highlights of, uh, of the flight for me. One was uh, right after LOI when we got our first look at the moon, and uh, it was a fantastic, spectacular sight. And the other, I guess, was uh, what DEI uh, burned uh, so beautifully, and uh, right after DEI, that was an awfully good feeling. Okay, well, I guess... Uh there were a great many uh, new thrills for me. And uh, the one that was most impressive, though, was uh, the liftoff that began the flight, and I knew that I was going into space after uh, a few years of waiting and training. And then as far as uh, the event that I would not like to, to repeat again, it's probably the, uh, the time when I uh, fell down in front of the TV when we were deploying the rover. Question number two. Near Spur Crater, you found what may be Genesis Rock, the oldest yet collected on the moon. Tell us more about it. Well, I think the one you're referring to was uh, what we felt was almost entirely plagiarized, place, or perhaps on the north side. And uh, it was a small fragment sitting on top of a, a dark brown, larger fragment almost like on a pedestal. And uh, Jim and I were both quite impressed with the fact that uh, it, it was there apparently waiting for us. And uh, we had hoped to find more of it. And I'm sure had we uh, more time at that site, uh, we would have been able to find more. But I think this one rock, uh, if it is in fact uh, the beginning of the moon, will tell us an awful lot. And uh, we'll leave it up to the experts to analyze it when we get back to uh, determine its origin. Question number three. Apollo 15 is already being described as one of the great events in the history of science. Aside from the crystalline rock, what other findings at Hadley Apennine seem most important to you? Well, I guess uh, immediately I think of the, uh, the orientation or organization that was revealed in the side of uh, Mount Hadley. There's 14,000 feet vertical relief, a vast mountain face exposed to us, and there was a layering in there that was most impressive for the total 14,000 feet. 
and we commented on the number of uh, beds that we could see. That really impressed me that you could have that much organization in, uh, on a large mountain on the moon. Question number four, this was the toughest landing area we have attempted to, to reach on the moon. Describe what it was like flying into it. Well, I think uh, to begin with, we had uh, every confidence that we could get to the landing site. Uh, the trajectory had been modified such that we had uh, adequate clearance over the mountains. And uh, the first flight I had out the window was uh, somewhere around probably uh, nine or 10,000 feet as we passed down below the upper elevations of Mount Hadley. And I could see uh, Mount Hadley to my left before we uh, pitched, pitched over and saw the, the plane at Hadley. And uh, that was probably uh, as impressive si a sight as I've seen. Uh, the landing itself, once we pitched over, was uh, somewhat of a surprise in that the, the cratering was much more subtle than we had expected. Uh, there was a great lack of any large fragments of boulders on the surface. It was uh, apparently quite smooth. And uh, those uh, rather deep craters, which we, we had anticipated using as uh, landmarks, because of their subtlety, uh, did not appear quite as readily as we had hoped. Uh, I think we did recognize our uh, relative position uh, east-west of the rill because of the size of the rill itself. Uh, I think we were a little off in the north-south, but uh, close enough to handle the traverses of the rover. I think that uh, having a vehicle such as that, as that enables us to go into uh, more complicated, difficult landing areas because it's not necessary to land on an exact point. Uh, we can take advantage of our mobility and land anywhere within a certain prescribed area, uh, which was uh, initially our goal on this flight. Question number five for Al Wharton. In lunar orbit, you too carried out geologic observations. For example, you reported cinder cones. Could you discuss this and other observations from 60 miles up? Uh, yes, the comment on the cinder cones was uh, uh, one of uh, color, but we noticed, uh, particularly um, on some of the lighted part of the backside, that many, many of the craters uh, that, we, that we flew over uh, were filled with uh, what appeared to be lava. There seemed to be a great number of lava flows in uh, in the Mari area, particularly Mari Imbrium. Mari Imbrium seems to be a, just a countless numbers of, of lava flows, uh, which were all uh, apparently very thin and, and very fluid. And uh, you can see, you can just count number uh, numbers of uh, full fronts covering uh, Mari Imbrium. So we got, uh, I think, quite a distinct impression of, uh, of, a, of a great deal of volcanism around the moon. And in uh, some particular isolated areas, such as the Littrow area, and such as uh, areas like uh, probably the Aristarchus Plateau, there's a great deal of volcanism and uh, some center cones and, uh, and certainly a lot of lava.